Hi, I'm going to take a look at a 30 years war quad game, Rakoi, Rakwa. I just make a disclaimer right now that I only speak English and that barely fluently. Um, so don't expect me to pronounce foreign words and names correctly at all. So um, with that over with, we are going to explore and play a game from the 30 Years War Quad. This is the one by Decision Games. I don't remember what year it was put out. Uh, let me see real quick. Uh, eh, 1995, I think. So, it's a remake of the old SBI game. Uh, quad game, so. Anyway, let's get, uh, let's get to cracking. Here's a partial overview of the battlefield at the start of the game. The units are in their setup positions and the designer's note said that the Spanish units may not be the actual units that uh, participated in the battle but just a best guess kind of a thing because the information at this time was very scarce for finding uh, order of battle info for the Spaniards. The French, uh, they have a historical setup, but I just chose the one that was on the map. Um, I don't think it's in completely historical, but um, anyway, it's the one that came with the game, and it's the setup locations are printed on the map. So you just set your units up. Oops, I guess you can't see that one, huh? Set your units up in the little hex that it uh, indicates, and you're good to go. So, it looks like in our game we have a sequence of play. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to... The game is divided into a first player turn and a second player turn. The first who the player whose player turn is currently in progress is termed the phasing player. The activity which may take place during each phase is outlined below. First thing we're going to do is start off with the first player turn, and I believe that is the French in Rapoy. Double check, make sure. Yes, first player. So we will have the disruption removal phase. That will be the first uh, thing that we will do. Uh, I can tell you right now, at the beginning of the game, there are no units that are disrupted, so that is not an issue. So we will proceed directly to the artillery fire phase. Okay, as we can see, the French player only has two artillery units, one battery here and one battery here. Um, range is unlimited and it's only affected by terrain and line of sight. Uh, so the closest Spanish units would be these along here. Oops. Um, and since it's the max range on the artillery fire chart is six plus, and the odds of uh, hitting anything is a you got to roll a one. So uh, the odds are slim, but you might as well fire while you have them. Artillery guns can be captured; they're not affected by any other combat result. So I guess what we're going to do is. We're going to find a six-sided die. We are going to refer to the artillery fire table. Well, first let me go ahead and designate a target here. We are going to designate, uh, designate, we are going to designate We are going to designate as a target uh, the hex that has the Milos in it. And that would be right here. You can see it. 
So we're going to fire at that hex twice with artillery at greater than a six hex range. Which coming over to the artillery fire table, you can see that we're going to need a one to get a, a DD result, a disruption result. So we're going to go ahead and roll a die and see what we get. And then I'm going to find my real dice. But for right now, this one's going to have to do. First shot is a three, which I guess is up here. Miss, and I need a one here. Second shot from the second artillery battery is also a three. That's a miss. So that's pretty much it for artillery fire. Okay, up next is movement phase. The phasing player may move all, some, or none of his units and leader counters as he desires within the limits and restrictions of the movement rules and any relevant exclusive rules of the game. So, movement. Pretty much standard for most of these hex encounter games. Back when I grew up and was playing games, we didn't delineate. Oh, area movement, hex encounter, Euro, that type of thing. They were all just war games. Um, anyway, we'll move our units according to the rules here. No combat will take place. During a movement phase, number of movement points expended, movement from hex to hex is consecutive. Uh, once you take your hand away from a piece, it's considered moved. I'll be ignoring that, of course. Uh, one movement point in a clear terrain. On this map, there is some forest, but it's not, uh, you can't move into it. There are no hills, nothing like that. I think there's just a couple of trails or roads, roads. And that's it. It's pretty much just a flat battlefield. Nothing really to it. Um, so there's no real terrain involved in it. Uh, effects of friendly units. I think you can only have one unit per hex plus a leader and an artillery unit. There are zones in control, but you do not have to stop when entering an enemy zone of control. Um... So they're very fluid. However, if you end your movement phase in an enemy zone of control, you must attack all adjacent units. Uh, combat is mandatory between undisrupted units, which end the movement phase in enemy zone of control. So artillery and leader units do not have zones of control. And yeah, no more than one uh, unit in a friendly hex, whatever. And you cannot enter or move through a hex containing another friendly unit. So, anyway, that's pretty much the basic rules on uh, movement. Just want to point out there are only five pages of rules to the quad game. The rest is designer notes, uh, scenarios, and a few articles in the back about conflict and uh, warfare during the Thirty Years War time period. So anyway, on to movement. One other note, in this uh, scenario cavalry can charge disrupted infantry units. Their strength is doubled when they do so. Um, that can be combined with other attacks, however you just double the cavalry units uh, combat factor and ignore uh, you know, there's no doubling on the other infantry units that might participate or non-charging cavalry, that type of thing. So, anyway, just a real quick uh, point out that the number on the left is the combat factor. And the black uh, square around the combat factor on this cavalry unit indicates that it can charge. Uh, what do we have? Do we have any infantry over here? Oh, we have a leader. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but he has a leadership value of a 1 and a movement allowance of 6, and I forget what the star is. I think he might be an overall type leader or army commander or, or I don't remember. 
I'll have to look it up. And I will do so. And then we have a uh, French unit. These are all French. French are in blue. Spaniards are in red, by the way. Uh, we have the combat factor of a 10. The uh, movement allowance is a 3. And just gives the uh, unit identification and unit type their uh, infantry. So, anyway, let's get started. Yes, this is going to be a long, drawn-out process. I will probably not do after-action reports. I'm probably just going to play the game and record each painful die roll and movement point expenditure and babble along the way. So, this is my first video since last year, about this time. So, um, been away, been sick, kind of got out of war gaming for a while, had some family issues, and just, you know, you know the, you know the routine. So, anyway, we're going to advance on the Spanish line, and I think we're going to move our cab first our horse first and then we'll do our uh, foot. Artillery units cannot move and you don't want to put a bunch of units in front of them because you will not be able to fire through them. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. I think we'll stop at five. In fact, I'm going to take that away. Take that back. I'm sorry. I didn't move my hand away from the piece. One, two, three, four. Here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This leader and his horse. Oh yeah, there is a leadership rating type thing in this game. Uh, command control. The units in command control fits within the command radius of a friendly unit. The command radius of a unit is its leadership value of the leader, which is this one. Uh, and all hexes within that number. Command radius is number blocked by enemy units, zones of control, or terrain. Each commander may command any number of friendly units within the radius. Leaders are always in command. If one unit is in command, then other friendly units are automatically in command if those units meet the following criteria. The other units are adjacent to a unit which in, is in itself in command. There may be an entire chain of such units, all of which are in command. So, basically, I just got to be adjacent to another unit which can touch other units. So, um, I guess that's good. Uh, let's see, if you're out of command... Your movement factors are halved. Units which are out of command may still attack, rally, and perform other game functions normally. Okay, so. I guess it pretty much, uh, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. And as long as he is touching other units there, you can put this unit in command, and then the others are in command because they're adjacent too. So I guess that's what they're saying. One, two, three. That's kind of a weak unit. Weren't those shouldn't go on the outside? I took my hand away, but oh well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where are we at? Let's move the camera over a little bit. Okay, what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five. And he's in command by extension. Let's move some of these weaker cavalry to, cavalry to the uh, side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Oh, he'd be out of control. Command control, we can't have that there. Now, let's see what else we got. Let's go with the cavalry over here. I have some in reserve, it looks like, but we'll mess with it later. Uh, 
Looks like the French right is uh, five is uh, pretty hefty over here, and then we have some lighter units. It looks like so. Better make sure I can get a commander up there, eh? So they're all in command by extension, and in fact, he has an excellent uh, radius to begin with. No, I'm not going to move them all their uh, full movement allowance. Not all of them. unit. What are these units? These units are yeah, they're French. We want to kind of keep them up there together. So one, two, three, four, five. So everybody's in command. Well, yeah, by this guy. I don't like him being by himself. Let's put him up here with the eight. You can still command everybody. So everybody there is in command. What do we got here? What are we looking at? Okay, that just leaves the uh, foot to move. And a couple of uh, cavalry in reserve. Well, actually, a couple of foot in reserve, too. So, oops, I'll do that. Okay. Tercios, or not Tercios, French didn't fight in Tercios. They fought along the Swedish system. Um, we'll go ahead and move the their units. They don't move very far. One, two, three. One, two, three. Victory conditions are um, based upon strength point losses and demoralization of the enemy. Um, you count up the strength points of units destroyed, and if that reaches a certain level, the other side's army is demoralized and uh, is uh, penalized with uh, some severe penalties. I know that's kind of a redundant uh, sentence. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? What's under this artillery piece? I gotta remember. Don't block my artillery. Uh, let's go. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should have a longer bombardment. Uh, I think the Imperials attacked first anyway, so... Well, anyway, this is not going to be a historical outcome. Three... Three. Hold on here. Hang on. And yes, my counters are unclipped or whatever, and they will remain so unless I really like the game, and then I'll clip them. But when I first play a game or look at a game, it's like, well, I'm not going to take all the time to clip the counters if I don't think I'm going to be playing it very often. Uh, let's see. I need some leaders for these guys. They're just kind of hanging out there. And the only leader I have is this guy, so maybe he needs to get... Now that I'm going to block my artillery again. Let's uh, move these guys back and move them out to the side. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, this guy is Mola. First Mola. And let's... He was here with this artillery. No. Yes, no. How do you move him? Um, let me see here. This was the leader and the mullet unit. But they couldn't have been stacked. The first mullet was over there, so. Anyway. Um, let me think. Yeah, that's a disrupted side, by the way. 
That's their combat strength, and they can't attack. So it's just basically a defense strength. Um, everybody's in command. I think I want to leave the center as it is, because I want to make sure that I have... have line of fire. So let's just leave these guys under here for the moment. And I think we'll call that an end to the French movement, maybe. We could bring this guy here up. Uh, where are their strongest tercios at? And right in the middle. So I'm going to need that strength in the middle then. So I think we'll bring up and position our reserves uh, so that they can quickly get into battle. Maybe. Maybe I'll just see what the Spanish do. Their tercios are slow, so I'll have time to maneuver any reserves that I need to and move up front. I think we're going to go for another round of battery fire next turn. There's 14 game turns. I think that since we're outnumbered in artillery, 3 to 2, the French that is, I think we will um, um, call that good and try to plink away at them with artillery for a turn and then go see, or a couple turns and see what happens. So, other than that, a little painful exercise is over. We come to the combat phase. No units are adjacent, so there's no mandatory combat. And then we go to the second player turn. So, uh, I think that's going to be it for the moment. When I return, we will do the um, Spanish uh, turn. So, anyway, we will... Talk to you later, and I hope to see you back here again soon.